These beach roses are painted on a piece of paper that was initially prepared for another project. It was an underpainting. It's been sitting for months and I lost interest and now I'm using pieces from it for different smaller paintings. The brush marks might feel a little distracting. I'm used to that but as far as the colors they are perfect for what I need. I'm working on a painting with wild roses and the beach. It's a nice little scene, so that will be out soon. But depending on when you are watching this, it might be already out. Within that larger scene, I don't really have a chance to zoom in on the flowers a little bit more. And when you work on a larger scene, it is great to just show the shape of the flowers but not going into detail. Here I just want to practice a little bit drawing, painting these flower shapes. I'm not concerned with the leaves so much but it's the shapes of the flowers that I want to explore a little bit more. I'm using right now this pastel pencil. That's just something I had and I know it's going to be very close to the tone and colors of the paper so it won't even stand out that much but it's enough for me to see the outlines if I need them. And here I really want to spend a little bit of time to kind of explore the shapes. So within the painting, within the larger painting, I won't be doing it as much, but here it is a good chance to study the flower so that later when I'm working on something larger, I can just with a few marks of pastel suggest a shape. So, all right. I have my flower shapes, of course I didn't go for exact layout there in the picture because I'm more interested in the flowers. So I can do a few things here. I can start with the flowers, which probably is a good idea because the whole thing is a little bit harder to read right now. So let's add some of those darker colors maybe within the flowers. But if that's kind of difficult right now to still see the flower, you might want to find it easier if you kind of carve that flower a little bit out of the background. Because we have the outlines, I can just do something like this. Maybe even suggest some leaves spacing between the leaves but that's not that important right now what i want to do is to start the flower read better against the background that's my goal and see how fun it is just kind of suggest those spaces between the petals like this and i don't want to have this sharp edge going all around it what I have here like this, then maybe a little bit here and maybe soften the edge here. So that would be one and I'm doing this darker color right now and maybe suggest some of the stems somewhere in the background. Then maybe a little bit more of this warmer color because it is a warmer darker green comparing to the darker blue green which i will use so i'm just more concerned with the shapes but i want to have this green right now follow around the painting but i also like the background color so i don't want to eliminate it and it's fun to create the suggestions of stems. So we have this round shapes and then we have a little bit of a linear stuff happening there. So maybe something here again can suggest a flower. I mean a leaf. So something like that. Here. 
And now I'm going to switch to cooler green. That one was more olive. Now this is going to be cooler more blue. And this petal stands out. So I keep that. Makes it more interesting. And let's get a little bit here. So this shape, it had the shadow. So I can basically get a little bit more variation within the greens here. And that's the shape of the flower, right? So I kind of want to show those leaves. And if there's a dark space like we see over there, I have to see if I really want it to be that dark, maybe like in the center of the picture. I don't want to have that really dark space. So I just need to proceed gradually and see what happens. I think that's kind of nice. So this is the bud, rose bud. And I start reading this shape, right? I start reading it. Now I can start bringing the colors inside the shapes too. They have some lovely pinks that I will get to use. Pinks and purples. This is kind of, well, that's the lighter one. This is the darker color. So I have this darker area right here. Close to the center and then we have this in the shadows and I'm not going to be following every detail. It's not my purpose here, not that much, but the overall shape, that's what I want to show. Like if there's a petal behind, this gets more light. I want to show that. And then this one, it's very interesting because it doesn't already have the petal missing the petal from the top i'm kind of going over the center right now but that's okay this is pastel it's not going to be difficult to correct to layer lighter color there are all sorts of twists in those petals but i don't want to get too tricky with that just going to be a distracting so right now the best thing i can do is to keep my eye on the shape the overall shape of the flower like if this is the shadow side i want this darker color then we'll have some of the creases in the petals or shadows from the leaves so they're going to make them darker then the pink this is going to be cooler so maybe i'll use some cooler purple for that and right now i'm kind of staying on a darker side rather than lighter side of these purples because later it's easier to add those lighter colors so a little bit of that cooler color and actually i think i want to get a little bit of this cooler purple here and then this darker purple here and then it just eventually becomes not just a representation of a photograph but something nicer something more exciting i hope at least so what about this one it has a little bit of a darker area colors i'm using right now also are pretty situated meaning chromatic so let's see i have this lighter and this a little bit darker but lighter than the initial pink oh how bright it is and you know what that's okay because i can tone it down but it just kind of gives it that lovely glow there right away And also because of the paper, the colors, kind of duller colors already, it stands out quite a bit. So anyway, a little bit of 
this light, maybe even here. And you probably look and say, how do you even know where you have the petal and where you have the center of the flower? It's, it's a mess. It's all mixed up together. It's okay if you don't exactly know. You know enough as far as the shape of the petal approximately. And then I just go by the shadow area and where that petal is going to be more illuminated. It's going to get more light. And here it's right here on the edge. And we also, like this petal is actually lit up the most, I think, here. And then we have a little bit of shadow on that one, kind of the way it's curving, curling. So I want to vary the pressure because if it's the same, it's going to give me the boring edge, boring sharp edge and boring flat color. So that's kind of getting a little bit tricky to keep track of the twisted petals. So we have this one, right? We have this one going that way, and then we have this one doing this. That's the top of the petal that we see here. And then that one is in the shadow. That's a nice color too. It's a little bit darker than this, but stands out against that one. So I can also show a little bit light on that curving edge over here. And maybe here, this is a better color as well. Well, within this petal here, we'll have a little bit of variation as well. Before that darker, kind of pinkish purple takes over. And to finish the look, let's give it the center. And the center kind of got a little off. It should be closer to this side. So I start with a green. Maybe it should be even a little bit duller. And I can only imagine how on screen it's going to look even brighter than it is. To show a little bit of shadow within. And then on the outside, we have this ring. Basically, so it's good. So I have that green. And on the outside, it's a little bit different color, more towards ochre. This is in the shadow, so I don't really want to light it up with very bright colors, with very light colors. It should read like it's in the shadow, it should stay in the shadow. But I do want to find the color that will give me a little bit of that lighter texture. So it looks pretty light though, right? It stands out. So maybe it should be cooler. What if I use this gray? Try to tone it down. Well, it definitely cools it down. It doesn't stand out as much. I don't want it to stand out a lot, but... So that's the tricky part now, those finer details. Okay, that looks like something I can use. It is lighter, but it's also duller. It's a duller color than the original that I was using for that. And by itself, it's kind of this gray down, greenish, yellow color. So it sits within. 
Now let's see with a little bit cooler pink. That would show kind of the most sunlit part. I have to be careful with that, and probably not right now because it is still green to take care of. But it is a good call for this. I feel like I will be using it. So now that looks kind of nice. But what's with all these dark leaves? So let's get some light into the foliage. I'll start with something like this. So if I indicated any shapes, darker shapes, maybe right now I can start adding a little bit of texture, suggesting those veins in the leaves, the shapes. And again, don't want to go hyper-realistic here. It's all just shapes to me here right now. So I just want to start adding some of this a little bit lighter green. That is an interesting detail. It's kind of overlapping one of the leaves but i don't know if i want to do that well i can try because i really changed the whole background the way the leaves are i just have to come up with my own design now because i can get a few suggestions from the picture, but overall it's up to me. And let's get a little bit more here. I want to keep it more abstract. This is not the leaves study for me. This is the flower study. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on leaves. But I want to create an interesting design, basically. Let's get a little bit more of this purple here. And then there's that shadow here that I like. I'll be back to see what else I can improve in this flower eventually. But as I'm working all around, I can see if I can use that color in different parts of the painting. That's a nice thing to unify the picture. Now let's bring the brighter green and see what that does. And let's suggest this overlapping leaf. And then it has some of the light on this side, on the edge, and then it turns and becomes a little bit, oops, I'm not following the right direction here. It's harder to do it. So let's bring again a little bit of this darker green to separate it. Then there's the lighter side on the other leaf that we see. So this one is casting the shadow there. Again, these are becoming too detailed. So it's not really what I will be doing here for the most part, but I just wanted to show what I'm looking at basically when I'm working on something like that. And look at if there is a nice detail that stands out that makes it more interesting design like let's say there's a nice light on this leaf here so i'll pick that up and maybe i'll do this kind of to continue the light and of course it will go off 
the picture there. That's fun. Again, I'm just working with my shapes right now. And here you can add a little bit more. But logically, there will be the shadow behind the flower. And there's more light on the leaves in front of it. So, kind of like that. And then I could just, I could just kind of add more light just like this with the shapes. And here at the top, I also have kind of this covers of this bud. But overall, this top is lighter, it seems to be lighter, it has more light on the foliage. So with my marks, I will just create a little bit lighter background. All right, let's bring just a little bit more interest here into this. Suggesting some of that foliage. And now let's get some of this lighter color. And to other flowers, other petals, I don't want to outline the flowers. What I want to do is just follow the pattern of light. Not so much the petals, kind of outlining the petal, but looking where that petal is lighter. And we have that light over here. And I probably should just still go a little bit lighter with the touch at this point still. Because I wanted to have some texture. Those petals, they're kind of crinkled and they have higher areas within them and lower. So this seems to be like doing this curving. And it's that. And then let's darken some of this color. And maybe let it be a cooler on that part. Now I can start emphasizing the edges of the flower here and here we have that petal. And this is the one that's behind it. And as the edge, it has some interesting twists of the petal. This one, I'm going to use a little bit darker, but still quite saturated pink. And then it gets that light here on part of it. And this one picks up some light, but this could be even lighter. Yeah, like this. And this part here. And this here. It's just so tempting to start making this spontaneous juicy marks. But sometimes you can do you make it and it's not quite fitting with the idea. But right now, here I think it works. It's kind of lighter than it is in the preference, but that's fine. It still gives me the idea about that shape of the flower, missing that petal. And that's the easier part about this because 
they're kind of too irregular so we can twist them a little bit and it's still realistic so now a little bit of light here in the petals then this one is actually passing some letting some light pass through it on certain parts and it gets a little bit of a backlighting effect so this one here is a little tricky it's like it's twisted it's curved here then it's twisted then it has a little bit more light over here seems like again backlighting kicks in and here too Okay, what about that one? Or should I just go try to finish a little bit more here? I really don't want it to have the sharp edge. I don't want it to look like cut out and pasted. And maybe a little bit larger. So see if I can still cover that green. And it became a little too sharp, right? So we want this darker and this part can be kind of protruding a little bit so break up this circle so where are the shadows that will separate the petals. I want to show that a little bit. Maybe here, there's that darker shadow. And what about here? So maybe a little bit more light. On this part and it has a nice glow this part is a little bit more blue so I keep using this more purple color to cool it here and even a little bit here but this gets a little bit more chroma here well i think i like this one i think it's actually working out pretty well here's the edge so i can push the side that's raised a little bit more the side of the petal and here i think i like it vague like that softer and here maybe like this one a little bit more stands out a little bit separates it but not to get too far separating these things and even here Giving them overlap a little bit. That works too. So a little bit more light here. And I think that's my favorite. <laughs> and of course, because I spent more time on it, probably, right? It's kind of more classic shape. So let's bring a little bit more light and interest in that. Again, this one is going to be in the shadow. Could I use the same? Same colors here. Yeah, I think it works. Could actually use maybe a little bit grayer color. Here for the center. And here. And then there's lighter color. I can try this because it's more open. 
then it gets more illuminated there but even if you lovely dots of light here i think we can see them catching some light i don't really see them doing it here but i can just suggest a few again not using the brightest yellow not at all like this right now if i compare it with the brighter yellows like this is lighter and brighter this one is more neutral but in that context it definitely stands out and that's just the right mode but this is a little bit duller color so that's for the shadow looks really well so what else i can do here well the rest would be probably just with adding a little more light kind of if i have those glowing highlights on this leaf i could add this very light color it's either this or maybe a even cooler gray that could work too Let's see maybe this one would be easier to get to but you can see the difference this one actually yes it's lighter but it's duller if i put it next to this one you see how this one just sparkles so maybe it needs to be a little bit more pure let's say i will use not this which was more yellow but this one a little bit more kind of blue green and let's get here this effect on this leaf i think it's working compare this and this this one is very dull comparing to that so no problem but i'm just making marks here right now So maybe like something else is catching light here. And in the reference, there's some nice light in there. You can just see how adding that highlight on the leaves actually creates more light in the picture. So we don't just need those warmer greens that I was using before. And well this one is actually even warmer than what i had before but you can see we can create some nice variation within the foliage and bring more light and i'm just going to do it this way and let's add some of this light over here so it's kind of following i think that's working so if i wanted to go more with the kind of design effects and light effects I could add even more of this yellowish green and that would suggest uh, more backlit areas so that's it that's just going to be a little too much now but it's nice it's kind of adding all this lovely light but you don't want to go just from very dark to very light because then you don't have your mid-tones area in the middle that's why i was building up to that a little bit and if you do want to get a little bit more mystery in the darker areas you can still bring a little bit more darker green but within those darker greens there are still some a little bit lighter 
areas so you can show that just make sure that the green you use like the one i had before probably not the best probably still better to stick to that cooler green in the shadow trying to see what other colors i have that could maybe create a little bit closer pinks but i don't know i think it just makes it duller here with pastels we try to get as close as possible but sometimes it's just better to leave it as is once it's working well it's not just pastels of course okay i got that really duller color there so i need something lighter okay that works and i wanted to have a little bit of a highlight here and if you can take a look at the reference closer it actually kind of goes up and then it curls and there's a bit of a shadow there so it's kind of details like that that i'm trying to pick up right now and see where the lighter and brighter areas are and see how nice it is when it's kind of melting into the background in some areas like here too i don't want to outline it all the time like some of it can have a sharper edge and then let your viewers your viewer's eye rest a little bit so i think that's it for that flower do i want to add a little bit more here i think i do because it's fun now that's the time when the overall shape is built and now it's icing on the cake so let's get a little bit of that and it's also important to well depending on your style but if you are trying to work kind of in a more free spontaneous looking style and emphasis on looking <laughs> because sometimes it just looks spontaneous but there's a lot of thought put into those marks and if you work in that style try not to kind of overdo it overwork it so this petal if i want to show it and I probably don't want to do that. Kind of following it into the shadow to show that separation. So I would use this color that's a little bit lighter than that initial very dark color that I used so now this one is still kind of very schematic looking Let's see if I can improve on it on its shape on the glow so we kind of have that color picking up here and if you noticed, usually I would say work very lightly. And right now I'm just kind of pressing on the stick very hard. But this is that final part. It's probably wiser to still work lighter. So you still have more choices. But sometimes it's just good about that more confident mark that will finish the painting actually will make it look more finished so let's print some light here 
but it's caking up already. I can tell that. And there's a little bit of that yellow or dark ochre color in the very center there. But we don't really see it that much, but I can still suggest a little bit. So that's the flowers. Now it's kind of very tempting to keep going and work on the foliage. And you can definitely do that, but I think I'm going to stop here. Let's go back to this color. And I think I also want to have a little bit of this lighter green to show up here. And very much like a suggestion in there. So it's not just kind of dark hole in that area. So if you enjoyed this demo, as usual, I'm asking, please give it a like. And YouTube will show it to a lot more people if you do. So that's just the magic of that highlight, huh? And I cannot just let it be. It's so tempting. And this is an even lighter pink that would work. For bringing out that ultimate highlight though the highlights are actually not as white on this but if i want to emphasize maybe like a certain spot turned the most towards the sun i can use that too white for that but we do have that lighter area. And if you really want to get picky, you can do something like this. And the hot pastel obviously will do a sharper edge. But you know, because everything is so kind of free style here. It's not working for me. Not that well. A little bit. Could show the shadows maybe here. So just a little bit more. I want to continue this light into this area. That's it, so that a little bit more interest here. And then the separation. But it's too light, right? Okay, if you enjoyed this demo, if it's helpful, please give it a like. And there will be a demo with the wild roses at the beach. And I'm working on it, but at the time you're watching, it might be already out. So I will post the link in the description below as soon as I have it. And thanks for watching.